Good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are joining me for the very first time, my name is Dahlia, and I have been teaching the Word of God. We are in the book of John. Oh, and it's getting wonderful. So I hope you can join us on reading through the book of John. We are doing an overview of the book of John, but sometimes it's so hard. We have to pick out those application and pick out those pivotal verse, life-changing verse, and kind of give you the application and responsibility of the believer. So bear with me as we go through this book. If you're a new believer, this is the book for you. If you're a seasoned believer, this is still the book for you because as many times as you read it, there are always new revelation, new building of your faith in the spirit because the word of God is spirit and it's life. If you did not subscribe to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, like the video and share the video with others so that they too can be blessed. Let's jump right in. We are in chapter four and this is a real meaty. Ooh, this is a one pot meaty meal because it's, it's so full of revelation. And remember, we said the book of John talks about the public and private ministry of Jesus Christ. And we're seeing this all come together. Now, again, I do aim to stay in the content and within the content and context, context of the book. Um, as much as we can, because, you know, we want to let the word speak for itself. And as new believers and even seasoned believers, I want us to go through the book of John and get the content and context of what he's talking about. Again, we know there are references and confirmation and, you know, verification of what John is saying. But I want to keep you in the context for the new believers so that they can do a read through and an overview and then go back and study out the entire lesson, running all the references, okay? So let's get into it. We are in chapter four. I'm going to see if I can read a few verses. We may have to stop and pick up there again, but let's see what we can do today. The last lesson, we uh, talked about the Samaritan woman and Jesus offered her the living water to drink. And we talked about the historical and cultural where uh, the woman really was not supposed to be talking to, the ma to a male without her husband. But we'll get into that a little bit more, just a little bit, um, a reminder. So we are in verse 16. So we're continuing the conversation from the previous lesson. So if you didn't see that lesson, please watch that lesson and then come back to this one. So in verse 16, they continued the conversation. So Jesus offered her the water, the living water. And he says, this water that I will give you will be a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And so the woman said to Jesus, again, from the last lesson, sir, give me this water that I may drink so that I will never be thirsty again, and that I will never come here to draw water. So she's still thinking in the natural. She's still thinking in the physical, but Jesus was taking her someplace. And remember I said in the last lesson, Jesus usually used um, parables he, because he wants to pull out of us an understanding. He wants us to get the spiritual. He wants that revelation to sit within your spirit. So he will use something that you're familiar with to speak to you, to pull you into a deeper level and a deeper understanding. She'll get there, but it takes a minute, you see. So now we continue in verse 16. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and then come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five, five husband. And the one whom you have now is not your husband. And in that you spoke truly. So you see, Jesus now is giving her a revelation. He's, he's pulling out of her life. He's seeing into her life in the spirit. And watch this. She says, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet because she knew that a normal man, a natural man could not know that that she has slept with five other persons husband and she has another person's husband in her bed right now. So she said, I perceive you're a prophet. And then she says, our fathers worship on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. So Jesus said, woman, believe me. Listen, he says, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Listen. 
person worship the father. So again, he's speaking now because remember in John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world. We're staying in the content of the book that he gave his only begotten son. What? Not to condemn the world, but by, by, by through him, through him, the world might be saved. So, so God didn't send Jesus to beat the world over their heads. He came to give us life that we will have everlasting life through him. So now he says there's going to come a time when it's not about the mountain or Jerusalem because Jesus is dying for the world and we don't have to go to Jerusalem or come into a specific place. You see that? We don't have to go to a specific place or to the priest or into a cubbyhole to confess your sin. It says you're not going to need a physical place. And so he says, you worship what you do not know. We know what we, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour, the hour is coming now when the true, listen, the true worshipers will worship the father. So see, now he's telling her because he really, he's telling her it's not going to be about a place. It's not going to be about a place. All right. He says where the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit, in spirit and in truth for the father seek it such to worship him. Then he says this. And I want you guys, when you're going back to study, you study this. He says, God is a spirit. Now, remember in the previous chapter, he says, when you to be born again, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Here, I wanted the Bible to speak for itself in terms of the spirit, because we're going to get into that, because the Holy Spirit is a person, and I don't want you to think that the Holy Spirit is an it, so I wanted you, we want to go through the book of John, and then we'll talk about the Holy Spirit, that's why I didn't get too deep in the beginning of the lessons, because I want the word to speak for itself, and then... And then we can talk about it a little bit more. So here is the first point about the spirit. He says, God is spirit. Notice what he says. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. You see that? Now, the truth will be explained in the same book of John, because there's a part in the book of John, we'll get to it, where Jesus was speaking and he says, sanctify them with your truth. He says, thy word is truth. So the word of God is truth. And he says, those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And here he says in 24, God is is spirit so the woman says to him i know the messiah is coming who is called the christ when he comes he will tell us all things you see that so she has knowledge because remember they're half jew half gentile okay they're not fully jews so because they're half jew on that side, they know that a Messiah is supposed to come. They are looking for the Messiah. But because they are half-breed, they, they mix the superstitious beliefs and they mix their paganistic ways with the Jewish tradition, you see. That's why you can't mix religion. That's why James says, the book of James says, you cannot be double-minded. You can't say there's all roads leads to God. There's no such thing. So they were mixing religion and therefore they kind of had this confusion. And she said, yes, we expect the Messiah and he will come to tell us all things. And then Jesus said to her, I, I who speak to you am he. Oh man, I'm telling you people, I want to shout, I want to shout. Because you see, Jesus now reveals himself to this woman. Let me say this. Because there's a lot of men in ministry who talk so poorly against women, females. I don't know. They just, there's some men who hate females. I don't know what their mother, mothers did to them. I don't know what is perpetrating this hatred towards women, but it is very sad. But here, Jesus, when you read the first part of the text, Jesus went on his way, he said, I have need to go 
through Samaria. So he had a purpose. And the purpose was Jesus had a message of deliverance, a message of eternal life for this woman. So to encourage you and to point out what Jesus' ministry is, because remember in John 3, 16 to about 20, he said, I did not come to condemn the world. Jesus did not come and condemn this lady for sleeping with all the husbands in the neighborhood. You know what kind of a woman she is because she had had five husbands and the one that's there now is not her husband. But Jesus did not condemn her. Jesus himself came and revealed his deity, his lordship to her because he is the Messiah, the one sent by God. He is the son of God. So I want you to read to um, notice the magnitude of this revelation to this woman. Jesus gave her a one-on-one -on -one revelation. So when you see men putting down women in the ministry and putting women down, like we have to sit in the back and go over here, Jesus took the time to face to face and talk with her to say, lady, I who speak to you, am he. Because remember what she said. She said, listen, we are waiting to see this Messiah, the Christ. When he comes, he's going to tell us everything. Because remember, the Samaritans are half Jews and they too were looking for the Messiah. It's only that they were looking for the Messiah and they got Buddha and Hare Krishna and everything else mixed all up, all the superstitions mixed all up in it. And so he says, I am he, I am the one who's that you're expecting. So to go into the text a little bit, Jesus said to her, go call your husband. Jesus, he highlights her sinful life. Notice he did not condemn her. What did he say to her? He says, you told the truth. She spoke the truth. She said, I have no husband. She didn't lie and he commended her. He didn't judge her because again, remember culturally, Jesus as a male should not be having a conversation. He should not be conversing with her without her husband, but yet he did because he's Lord. He can do that. And so he knew that he went out of his way because he said, I have need to go through Samaria because he knew he had a mission. There was a soul that was thirsty. Notice he met her at the well at the hour that she, she doesn't even, she's not even supposed to be there at that hour because the, the group of women would go at a certain hour. But because of the type of woman that she is or was before Jesus changed her life, she would go at that hour to avoid the other women because she'd been sleeping with all their husband. And that's how she met Jesus. And sometimes we are in the deep pit of our sin. And that's when God comes in. The Bible said, while we were sinners, we were in sin. Then Jesus came. Oh my goodness. And he came to this woman. So don't let anybody condescend or speak to you in, in any kind of a low manner. That because you're a woman and put you down because you're a woman. It's not about your looks. It's not about your status. You know, Jesus loves you and if he went out of his way to bless and to teach this woman and to give her eternal life he handed her eternal life on a silver platter don't let any man put you down for no reason whatsoever Jesus thinks highly of you he did not judge her condemn her or tell her your tickets punched to hell he said you told the truth now I'm gonna tell you who I am I am he that you're looking for so culturally, this was an inappropriate conversation if it were a regular man. But this wasn't a regular man. This was the Messiah, Jesus, speaking to her. 
She said, I have no husband. She told the truth. You see, he entered into that door of her heart. You see, she was thirsty, but she thought she was thirsty for natural water. But Jesus is saying, baby, you're thirsty for something else. It's me that you're looking for. It's the eternal life. It's salvation that you need because she had five husbands. That means she's looking for something. And when you look at the world today, you see people running after money and lust and, and sex and power, you know, and fame. It's empty, people. It's never going to fulfill you or satisfy you. They're running because they want a husband. They want a baby. It's never going to satisfy you. Only Christ can satisfy the thirsty, that dry parched soul of yours. Nothing else will. And some people are finding that out now, sadly. And so Jesus spoke into that empty and voided place in her life. He says, go call your husband. He knew she was looking for love in all the wrong places because she's been with all the husbands. And she said, I have no husband. And he says, you spoke the truth because the one you have is not yours. Oh, my goodness. God is so good. She said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. So now she's kind of pulling now to see because there was no way a man, a regular man could have known her intimate kind of like sordid life. So she said, you've got to be a prophet because she's never met him before. She has never seen him before. Right. And so how is it that he's telling her her business? And so <clears throat> Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither worship in this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. You see that? We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But you see that? He says you worship that which you do not know. Sometimes there's God in people. There are people, there are sinners out there who you know, the Bible said the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. And everybody has some God within them because we are made in the image and in the likeness of God in Genesis, according to the book of Genesis, right? And so that part of her, he says, listen, you worship what you do not know. So there was a part of her, that's the thirsty part, that's the longing part that she didn't really know. She And many sinners, they don't understand. You see, all those you know people who go out and they do wicked things, they don't know that emptiness, that void, that nasty spirit within them. You know, that the spirit that the spirit of God is trying to pull them, but because of all of the materialistic things in the world, they go that way. But Jesus spoke to that part. And if we as believers, as saints, could begin to speak to that thirsty part in people when we evangelize and not judge, you see, and just speak to that emptiness. If we can hone in like Jesus did, many souls would come to the kingdom of God. Many souls will come to the kingdom of Christ. And he says, God is spirit. Notice he didn't say God is a spirit. He says, God is spirit. One of the verse I want to share ahead. And, you know, again, I said, I want the book of John to speak for itself and we'll go stay in the content, you know, because again, we're trying to do an overview, but I want to go to this one, uh, cheat, 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 <laughs> John 6, 63. And it says this, and, and it says, it is the spirit that quickens. So it's the spirit that makes alive. Remember what Jesus said, God is spirit, right? And so it says, it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So I want you to know that, that the word of God is also spirit and life. God is spirit. And so he says, our fathers worship in this mountain. So again, they are Samaritans, but they're half Jews. And so they can say their fathers worship in this mountain, right? And so again, I, like I said earlier, the Samaritans, they believe that Moses commissioned, you know, the, the, um, the altar, the different altars, they believe, but they mix, they kept mixing it because of their background. 
And then we see that. So historically, the Samaritans, they accepted the first five books of the Bible. They, you know, they accepted the teachings of Moses. But again, that's where it all stopped for them. And they weren't too versed in all of it, you know, because they mixed the religion. They had so many things going on. But Jesus says, listen, the hour is coming when you're not. Notice he said hour. He didn't say months, days. He says the hour is coming. So you see how God's perspective and our perspective is different because he hadn't yet gotten to the cross. He said the hour is coming that you're not, you're not going to worship here or in Jerusalem, but God is seeking those who would worship him in spirit and in truth. And so again, to worship in spirit means that you are concerned about what's the, not <laughs> that you are not concerned about the, the place, but you are concerned about the spirit. God is spirit. So it's not about a spiritual place because in the Old Testament, that would be the place where the spirit of God would hover or meet, meet up with them. You see, and he says you will worship him. It wasn't an outward sacrifice. All right. And he says in truth, according to the counsel and to the word of God, he says, I, it is I, I am he who speaks to you. And so he reveals himself to her. Jesus still wants to reveal himself to the sinners and he's going to do it through us the born again believers so it's important that you study the word and you go back and you research and you study the word and you pray you pray and you seek the will of God you ask him because remember God is spirit and he says you worship him in spirit and in truth and when you get into prayer and you get into the word of God the Holy Spirit the spirit of God will speak through you into someone else's life it's not spooky and it's not deep the reason why there's so much confusion is because you have these false teachers and these false prophets who go out and they do these heresies and they practice these paganistic and these superstitious ways and they mix it in the church and they create confusion but you see God wants those who will serve him in spirit and in truth and that means that you have to study out this word what we're doing is a quick overview but when we're finished with the book of John go back and study it out and prayerfully study prayerfully seek the Lord that you too because the spirit of God is going to dwell in you as a believer remember to be born again you first get cleansed with the washing of the water and then you what get the spirit you the two comes together god is spirit remember that so when you come and you believe he says all you have to do is believe when you believe he says you come into the light but many don't believe because they don't like the light why because the light reveals their evil deeds and they don't want their evil deeds to be exposed so they don't want Jesus that's why many people don't want Jesus it's not that they don't you know believe he's God they know that so they don't want to come near because they don't want to stop their wrongdoing but this woman she was thirsty she was thirsty and Jesus went out of his way he said I have need to go through Samaria because he knew that he had an appointment with this wonderful woman because the world brought her off. She was like an outcast. She was an outcast to the Jewish people, but even within her community, she was an outcast because she was having people's husband, which she wasn't supposed to do even as a Samaritan. And Jesus made it his point, made it his point to sit with her one and one. Notice his disciples were nowhere around. You're going to see their attitude when they get back. You're going to see their reaction. And their reaction is how the a woman and the Samaritans are viewed. And that's why I say from this lesson, don't let any preacher man or any preacher woman or any person whether they're Christians or not put you down as a woman don't let anybody make you feel less than because you are a woman Jesus went out of his way to speak to her one and one and she was the first evangelist because she went you're going to see and she told everybody come see a man 
because why that thirst within her was filled satiated no more a thirst was in her because jesus filled that empty spot in her and he will do the same for you remember he didn't condemn her he says the husband you've got that ain't yours he's not your husband you spoke the truth and what many people should do is speak the truth about their sin jesus is not condemning you neither are we we're not condemning you we just want you to get out of sin so that you can have eternal life so that you can rejoice in the lord so that you can experience his presence like this woman jesus said you told the truth oh you told the truth and so he began to minister to her and he says the one you're speaking to he says yes i am that messiah i am he and he will do the same for those he sends across your path he will do the same for you oh this lesson is wonderful my time has been up a long time ago thank you so much for watching come back you're going to see the disciples reaction when they come back which will prove to you that culturally this scenario was offbeat but that's what jesus does he always goes offbeat not off beat in the spirit, but off our beat, off your beat. And so you'll see their reaction. So come back for more, like the video, share it with somebody else, and then invite people to subscribe. Subscribe to the channel and show your support. Thank you again. Remember, go with God and continue to be a blessing because you are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.